Hello everybody, Terry Measley here with Scale Model Podcast in association with Starship Modeler. In honor of the Scale Model Podcast's newest logo, which features only an airbrush so you have to throw away all your hand brushes, I'm going to talk about how to mask checkerboards. Uh, it's increasingly uh, evident in, in, in shows that uh, judges are looking for something to wow them. There's so much easy way to do things um, now with decals and masks and everything else. You have to show them something different. Uh, this is especially true at a show like Wonderfest, where it's an open judging system. A couple of years ago, I took a stab at, uh, at airbrushing um, checkerboards uh, with this, a TIE Defender from Bandai. Uh, I wanted to make a, uh, a CAG bird instead of just a gray classic Star Wars thing. So there it is um, on both sides. Just a simple checkerboard, uh, hand-painted, and I believe those are Tamiya paints on that. Um, the rest of the kit is, is stock. It's an out-of-the-box kit, and this uh, was, was nicely done, and it won me a gold. I was happy with that. Um, the year after that, more checkerboards, but I wanted to do something a little bit more challenging. Bandai's B-Wing, also a CAG bird, uh, and I wanted to try 30-degree checkerboards. So on both sides there and on the upper wings. And that um, Rebel Phoenix there is cut on a, um, a vinyl cutter uh, from uh, one of the Silhouette vinyl cutters. You can get these SVG files, uh, vector graphics files online. You can just buy a set of them, very nice. So here we go. Now, if you're obviously doing something tiny like, like this, you're not gonna mask that. I mean, you can, but no one's that insane. So you can print decals that are that small. That's red printed on white decal film and popped on there. That lets you print any size you want. You don't have to go looking through decal films for that. Now, what you're gonna need for this sort of thing is tape, uh, tape of a specific size. You've got Tamiya tapes here in one of Sean's um, holders. You can cut your own with a little tool that looks like this, a parallel cutter, and you can see you can adjust the uh, the distance between those blades. So then you just need a nice um, a straight edge for that. Uh, there are also things like um, like pinstriping tapes. I've got some pinstriping tapes here. Tiny, tiny stuff, 0.1 millimeter, one or one millimeter rather, 1.5 millimeter vinyl tapes, of various uh, pinstriping varieties. Um, Tamiya offers, I think it's Tamiya offers uh, vinyl tape, and they call it their um, a curve tape because vinyl will um, conform the curves a little bit better. And the idea here is that we're going to lay out a grid, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Hi everybody, I'm back. I should also mention there's another good use for the vinyl cutters in cutting masks, and you'll need to make sure you have the removable type of vinyl. Um, you can make patterns, you can make pat uh, parallel lines, so you can cut parallel, you can cut curved lines, uh, straight lines, whatever you want out of um, this vinyl material and put it on. It's a good way, instead of, uh, uh, of the uh, pinstriping tape, if you have access to one of these. Uh, and some of your friends probably do. They're extremely useful. Uh, so, I'm going to start with an airplane wing and show you how to do your uh, checkerboard patterning here. So, specific type of... What I've done is I've measured this, which is a 6 millimeter tape. And I'm going to have 5 rows. So it's 30 millimeters. I generally find a panel line or something I can line up on because that's what they would do on the aircraft or whatever subject you've got and then go out. Uh, now, if it's two panel lines and you're going to have to do some math and that's where those cutters come in handy. The first thing we'll do is lay your tape down all the way at the edge. And to me, a tape is ideal for this because it's soft pliant and uh, that adhesive can be moved. You can pick it up and you can lay it back down as many times as you want. It burnishes down well. 
So it looks like I got just a touch of a gap there. Come back to it, bring it down. Just like that. And that's my first one. I'm gonna tuck that under because that's staying where it is. I'll come in with another one. And this is the big trick. This is the big reveal. Lay this down the same way. Looks pretty good. Grab a second one. That last one is just the spacer. So that's how I'm gonna keep the exact distance. And I'm realizing now I should have picked something other than yellow because I can just, it's hard to see with this yellow tape. I think you all see where I'm going with this. That one's down. Looks good. Yep, no, it doesn't. While it's not difficult work, it's tedious. Take your time and the results are worth it. So there's a stripe. Now I just fold these ones under, put that same piece of tape down, one in, pull that piece of tape out, a little off here, there you go, and that's also how you would do invasion stripes or whatever else if you're going to do stripes, so that's the first set, that's very important to get a square out of that, and I've got a photo etched 90 degree square here so I'm going to just find a spot that makes sense tape it down put my first mask sheet down parallel I mean not parallel not yet perpendicular there so now I've got a perfectly perpendicular 90 here. That one's going to stay where it is. Yeah, I'll just leave it. And so forth. So you just repeat it the second side. Obviously there's more of them here than on the, the flat side, so it'll take a little bit longer. I'll do a couple of them, then I'll Julia Child my way and show you after it's painted. I've done this with the vinyl tape. Uh, the one thing I can warn you about the vinyl tape is it tends to lift up a little bit more than the um, Tamiya tape here does, the rice paper tape. Either way you do it, 
just before you spray dry, just like any other masking thing you're gonna do, you wanna burnish these edges down. And just use your fingernail, just burnish them down to make sure you don't get bleed underneath each one. You'll see it, it'll be obvious if it's lifting up or not. So there, you got it. As we move forward with it, you're gonna have your cross hatch. So, fresh out of the oven. I've got black paint over it now. Now I'm just gonna remove all these masks. We'll remove the stripes first because I always like to see the stripes. Oops, that doesn't come off, that's my edge. Okay, so that's that. Now we wanna paint the areas that don't have get color in them already. So what we're gonna do is simply mask those squares off, both directions. So those are masked off, and we do the 90 degree angles as well. And you can see it, it's not difficult. If, if I was doing really small ones, I'll probably have to be working with tweezers to hold the tape firmly in place. I've got other challenges I want to make for myself on these sort of masks as well. I want to do kind of a, I'd like to try a curved checkerboard, like a tapered one. And that's where the, um, the vinyl cutter is going to come in handy to make those curves. Um, that's tricky. I'm still trying to wrap my brain around it to see how that'll work. Um, if you're trying to mask like a nose cone or something like that, then you're going to have to deal with, you know, cone math and that kind of thing that, that can get tricky um i'd have to do some digging on how to to build that 
But it shouldn't be all that difficult to do. And bear in mind, um, if this was done a long time ago, World War II or whatever, done in the field, it's not going to be perfect either. So you've got a little bit of, uh, of uh, latitudes. With modern ones, these guys are often just doing what we're doing here and putting vinyl on the plane itself. Cleaning it up real good and putting vinyl down and then painting over it. Or they're just vinyl stickers on the planes. So there it is. I'm ready to paint mine black. I'm going to go do that and then I'll take it off and we can see what it looks like. All right, I'm back. Fresh black paint on it. Let's take the masks off and see how good a job I did. It's kind of quick at it, so we'll see what happened. And this is, both coats here are um, Vallejo model air paints. Or, um, I kind of like them. I'll do different stuff with them. Ah, you see I'm scratching it. I should have waited. Um, you got to let these model air paints, any of the polyurethane-based paints, cure pretty well before you start messing with them. And generally, I would have thrown a, a little bit of uh, Future Down over it to harden them up a little bit be between um, masking layers. Just to make sure nothing bad happens. But... This is going to be good enough. You'll get the idea how easy it is to do custom painted checkerboards. This is the simplest way to do it on a flat surface with no curves, no uh, weird stuff going on, no surface detail. All of those things you can work out if they're surface detail. You just cut your masking tape around it and you're, it'll work out. Um, take your time. Avoid the scratches, but overall, for the super fast job I did on it, that's not bad. It worked out pretty well. And I still maintain nothing looks better than checkerboards. Prove me wrong. Really, prove me wrong. Let's see what else you got going on. I want to see some curved checkerboards out there. Um, I want to try masking plaid. We'll see what happens with that. So until next time, this has been Terry Measley for the Scale Model Podcast. Um... Keep on painting, guys. The contest is coming up soon, so uh, we'll see what happens. I want to see something good. Impress me.